all of Tampa Bay is celebrating tonight. The Lightning sweeping the Florida Panthers in game four and moving on to round three of the Stanley Cup playoffs. We have live team coverage from Emily Arena. Mason Morrow is at Thunder Alley where fans are kicking off their week on a high note. But first, we're reliving tonight's game with sports anchors Kevin Lewis and Kyle Berger. Guys, take it away. You can't really relive it enough, right? I would say how sweet it is because that's a cliche. How sweet. That's real original, right? The Lightning taking only the minimum of four games to finish the sweep of the Panthers and advance to the Eastern Conference Final for the third straight season. I need to run to a class and find a broom. There's got to be a broom around this building yes. somewhere. Yeah, the Lightning win two to nothing, but it wasn't without some drama early on. We'll pick it up here in the second period. We're scoreless. A wild sequence of events occurs. Alex Kalorn thinks he has the first goal of the game, but upon further review, the pass from Andre Palat hit the netting. Technically, that is out of play. No goal. A few minutes later, off the faceoff, Nikita Kucherov fires it into the back of the net. But wait, another review. Replay shows it was a hand pass from Anthony Sorelli. No goal. Kevin, can the Panthers get a no goal hat trick? No, there will be no history made tonight. Third period, Zach Bogosian throws the puck at the net. Good things happen when you throw the puck at the net. Pat Maroon, the big rig patrolling things, tips it home. The puck trickles in the back of the net. one nothing. Lightning take the lead. Time winding down. Would one goal be enough with Andre Vasilevsky in the net? The answer is yes. He makes a huge save. Anthony Sorelli throws it down the ice. Andre Palat's going to get the easiest goal of these playoffs for him. Lightning win two rip. A series sweep to advance to the Eastern Conference Final. And they get a little rest now uh, before they see who they play, the Rangers or the Carolina Hurricanes. And we can't forget about Andre Vasilevsky. 49 Ooh. saves in this game. This is the first time the Panthers were shut out all season the last time Florida was shut out Andre Vasilevsky in last year's postseason for Kevin Lewis I'm Kyle Berger will send back to you and you can't forget quest for the cup after our newscast a whole 30-minute special talking bolts hockey yeah that's right thanks guys meanwhile it might be just a Monday but thousands of fans came out to Thunder Alley tonight and that's where Mason Morrow joins us live right now and Mason I know tonight was really a roller coaster ride for fans out there I mean, you said it, a roller coaster indeed, but luckily this was one that ended on a high yeah. note at the end of the game as the brooms came out after the empty netter just with seconds left in the game, and they finally got to sweep up the Florida Panthers and move on to the Eastern Conference Finals. But let's jump into that roller coaster you just talked about that started in the second period as Kevin and Kyle just laid out. But what they didn't see out here was rain that came sweeping through the area and drenching everybody. And to add insult to injury, not one, but two goals taken off the board for the Lightning in the period, but none of that mattered because sweet redemption in the third. They get on the board with the only goal they would need, and as I said, the brooms were broken now, which is seconds left in the game as we're sweeping and dancing along with the players into the Eastern Conference Finals. You know, the coach has definitely caught us, you know, together and everything, and it's keeping those players going hard. Uh, they're not giving up. They're, you know, we're, we're supporting them every night, and here in Tampa, and it's, man, it's just good to see them. They're doing it on the ice. Well, that was a quick one. Series over. Looks like the celebration is already over. Like you said, it's a Monday. People probably have better things to do. Now the only thing to look forward to is to see who they're going to play next in the Eastern Conference Finals on the road to a three-peat here in Tampa Bay. Reporting live with Thunder Alley, I'm Mason Morrow, ABC Action News. All right, Mason, thank you. And make sure to stay with us right after our newscast. We're heading back out live to Emily Arena for special coverage of the Tampa Bay Lightning's Quest for the Cup. All right, let's take a look at Florida's most accurate forecast now. Chief Meteorologist Dennis Phillips. Dennis, the work week got off to a hot start. Can we expect this for the rest of the week, too? Yeah, at least the next two or three days, Jameson. Maybe changes by Friday. But if you were watching at 6 o'clock and following on social media, as Mason mentioned, we were kind of afraid that cell that we were looking at at 6 o'clock was headed right toward downtown, and it did. Now, it didn't last that long, but still, there is some rain even at this hour. If you look in eastern Citrus County and Hernando County, a couple of thunderstorms there. Same thing over Sumter County up near the villages as well. This area of rain out from the bay, western Hillsborough County across the bay. This is actually going to get a little bit closer and move into Pinellas County, although I think another light show out to the west. Friday night, there was a ton of lightning offshore, and I think you're seeing it again right now. So once this exits to the left, and it's going to be another hour and 90 minutes, you'll wake up to sunny skies. The warm and muggy weather continues tomorrow. Same deal. Mostly sunny through the day. Evening thunderstorms back toward the coast. 
but we've got a lot of changes to talk about the, by the end of the week. Not so much tonight and tomorrow. We'll wake up with temperatures in the 70s. A cold front? Maybe. We'll talk about it in a few minutes. All right, thank you, Dennis. We'll check back with you shortly. Well, a pilot is alive tonight after a good Samaritan jumped into action after a fiery plane crash on a tarmac at St. Petersburg Clearwater International Airport. And tonight we're hearing from the man who helped pull that pilot out of the plane. ABC Action News reporter Rochelle Aline has that story. A plane crash near afternoon traffic in Clearwater Monday. Sir, I was right at this intersection and, and the man beeped next to me and pointed over here. And I saw a plane on fire. I saw a man in the plane with it on fire. That driver, Russell DeBerry, says he knew he had to help. So he blocked traffic and grabbed a fire extinguisher from a nearby CVS. It's the scariest thing I've ever done because I had to make a decision on whether or not I was going to die or not but I wasn't going to watch the man burn alive. But despite his best efforts, he says spilling fuel kept the fire burning. I thought I'd put the fire out and it kept coming back. I leaned under to, because I realized the fire was going up under the wing at the fus fuselage. And when I leaned over, I put my hand on the windshield and the man put his hand on the windshield and he asked me, he said, is the plane on fire? And I said, yes, you have to get out. DeBerry was then able to put the fire out and help pull that man to safety. According to the St. Petersburg Clearwater International Airport, that pilot was the only person on board the twin-engine Cessna at the time. They say it crashed as he was trying to land at the airport, but his brakes failed. But despite the crash and the flames, airport officials also say that pilot wasn't hurt. And DeBerry says he's just grateful to have helped. God used me, and I, I'm, I'm, I was, I'm tickled to be available. In Clearwater, Rochelle Aline, ABC Action News.